Good afternoon. A lot of people freaking out about what's been going on in the crypto space here. Uh, we just had a massive drawdown today. If we go to our daily chart, um, at one point we were down over $10,000 on the day. Um, and since we've recovered more than half of that loss, um, I, I was, I'll just come out and say that I was wrong. Um, I, a few days ago, I made a comment that I thought this wick was, or this candle was the, um, was the low. Um, and as we went into the, the next day, we had this up move, which I thought was proof of that, but we never closed up. In fact, we fell down and closed low on the day. And I thought maybe that was kind of like the last little bit of the selling, um, but obviously I was wrong. Um, so we came down uh, really hard. Um, overall, this is a, about a 54, I, wanna, I think it's about a 54% drawdown. Yep, about 54%. And a lot of people are freaking out. And uh, people are saying the bull market's over. People are saying Bitcoin's going to zero, all of the FUD as per normal. Um, but I do wanna show you, whoops, I do wanna show you going back to previous cycles, um, some things that I've been thinking about. Um, in the previous cycles, you know, I'm, I've mentioned we had in the 2016 to 2017 bull run, we had multiple 30 plus percent drawdowns. And I think one of them was at about 40, 41%. So that type of price action is normal. Um, and then going back to the first halving cycle, 2012 to 2013, and you know, even this first drawdown right here, that, that, that drawdown from the first peak was 80%. And even here in the middle of, this, of the bull market, it was still at about 70% down. And so it's entirely possible to drop that far down in a double wave and still make a higher peak by the end of the bull market. So the short answer is I don't think the bull market is over. Um, but I have been trying to figure out what is different about this cycle. And before I get to that, I, I just want to say here that, you know, if you were going to like the, the thing that the way that you know that the bull cycle is about to end um, or that we're coming to the top is, a, is, is the blow off top. And if anything, if I go to my three-day chart, it's a little bit easier to see it in that term, in those terms. Um, if any place here was going to be a blow-off top, I would have thought it would have been here. Now, I know that it wasn't, but the price action looks more like a blow-off top there than anywhere else. Uh, or maybe, you know, if we, if we, you know, zoom in and pull this back, actually, still, it doesn't even look, it doesn't even look like it. So, yeah, right here. Um, but we didn't do that, obviously. In fact, we went higher. And then we've rounded here. This is not a blow off top. And so a lot of people are wondering, there's all these sorts of theories and names of things that I'm not gonna go into. Um, but I have been trying to think to myself, what is different in this market uh, compared to the last cycle? Why, like, I, I do think that the price action, the volatility to the upside and to the downside is normal, but I think it's exacerbated by leverage. And I think that's the one thing that I can't account for that I think is different in this cycle versus the last cycle. And that is the amount of leverage that people are using with things like Kraken and Binance, et cetera. Um, I don't think that people were previously able to leverage crypto the way that they are doing now. And people are doing it dangerously so. You know, and I think that when, you know, when you're on this side of the, you know, of the, price action when it's going up and you're leveraging two, three, four, five times or more, you know, you obviously look like a genius, but the problem is I don't really think people understood what they were doing when they were leveraging themselves into these trades. And I don't think they were setting their levels right. And I think they were getting liquidated. Um, and I, so I think that's where a lot of this pain came from was the liquidations from uh, irresponsible over leveraging. Um, I don't know if I'll ever really know that, but that's what this looks like to me. This looks like a capitulation bottom, people getting stopped out, people getting liquidated, um, people being at the part of the, uh, you know, cycle where, you know, I, you know, where they're down here at the anger and capitulation phase. Um, people getting hopeless that, oh no, it's crashing, it's going to zero and they're selling out and you know, in, in, and I think that, you know, I talked about this cycle previously in my psychology video. Um, I think that you can use this for not just the entire Bitcoin cycle, but I think you can also use it for 
uh, smaller rises and falls. So, you know, if we if we go back to here, um, I think that you know you've got here this whole uh, you've had a couple of different moments where people were like, oh, you know, is now like right here. They're looking at, oh, is now the right time to buy Bitcoin? And then up here, they're like, oh, I'm going to buy Bitcoin, you know, but then it starts coming down. And because they have the wrong time preference, they get to here and they're like, I'm selling. It's going to zero. Uh, so I think that that's often what happens. Um, and what's really interesting, there's a tweet by Jordan from CTM uh, just yesterday, actually. Um, he said, in about two weeks, people will be asking, is now a good time to buy Bitcoin? And I think that that's so true. Because I, I think that what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks is price is going to recover out of this and it may chop around a bit, but it's eventually going to get back to its all-time high. And then I know what's going to happen is as price starts taking off from the all-time high, people are going to be like, oh, is now a good time to buy Bitcoin? And they're going to be kicking themselves because they missed the sale opportunity, opportunity of a lifetime down here because they were too scared to pull the trigger. Because there was so much FUD out there, so much, so many people saying, oh, Bitcoin's going to zero, the bull market is over, and they missed out. A lot of people missed out. And, uh, and I think the one thing, the one caveat to my view right now is that I have some concern that people have not learned from their leverage mistakes. And I feel like on the rise up, especially from the low that we just experienced, that people are levering in irresponsibly again. I think I'm a little concerned about that, you know, blowing back in people's faces once again. Um, I could be wrong. I don't know. But it, suffice to say, I don't think the bull market's over. I think this is the bottom uh, of this part of the cycle. And I think we're just going to be on the way up. And we may chop a little bit. Like I said, we may chop a bit this way, but eventually we're going to make our way back up. Um, and that's my view. Um, one thing that I wanted to share too is if you pull back and you look at it in terms of what's happening in the overall market, uh, S&P was down. It's it's been on a recovery um, since basically around you know 10 a.m. Eastern time, um, but it's down. It's at a critical level. Uh, the Nasdaq was down at a critical support level, um, and it's been on its way back up since 10 Eastern this morning. Dow also at a critical level. Russell also at a critical level. Dollar index up pretty big on the day so far. Treasury yields up, hitting this resistance level at uh, 1.676. So if, if you take a step back, there's a lot of stuff going on in the market. And I think the hardest thing for people is trying to understand uh, ultimately what's been going on in the market. Um, so I, I, one, I wanted to pop on here and just say that like, I, I'm still confident. I still have conviction in this trade, um, in the Bitcoin bull market. I do believe it's going to recover and move to all time highs sometime over the next few weeks. Um, I think that this was a, if you had the opportunity to buy the dip, this would have been the best opportunity, like uh, in, in a long time. Um, so I wanted to first of all pop on and say that because I know a lot of people, you know, they follow different YouTubers or people on Twitter and a lot of times people are like, oh, I'm going to do what this person says or, I'm, or this person told me I'm to buy or to sell or this person says yada yada. Um, so I just wanted to go on and say I'm still in the trade. Um, as I said, if we do come down and go below this, this wick, um, then I'm going to be done. Uh, I'll be done with it and I'll and I'll say when I'm done with it but for right now I'm still hodling um, and uh, I thought I'd pop on here and also share something that that I was looking at earlier so I'm gonna I'm gonna darken up this line so you can see um, I pulled my, I put my log scale chart on and I'm looking at obviously here this gold line is where I where I was thinking maybe the uh, the peak could be um, but not to distract. I was looking. I was looking at the chart, basically exactly like this, and I darkened up this line that I have darkened, enlightened, and erased and redrawn on multiple occasions because I was like, well, it's not useful. I've drawn it thinking, oh, this is going to mark the bull market, and if we fall below that and close below it, then I'm going to be out. I'll know the bull market's over. Yada yada. Suffice to say, I'm sitting here looking at this, and then all of a sudden it hits me. 
hey, wait a minute, the March low, is it possible that I could extend this line? You know, obviously that's really bad, but I was eyeballing it. I was like, can I touch any of these, these lows, any of these wicks from the March low? Uh, because I don't know, like, I don't know if, if this is normal market behavior. To me, this seems normal other than maybe excessive liquidations from, uh, from leveraging and stuff like that. But to me, it almost seems, it, even though it's not a, necessarily a liquidity crisis like March 2020, February, March 2020, I was kind of thinking, I wonder if because of the nature of these sell downs, if, if I could connect these lines. And so I'm gonna make, I'm gonna put this in the background again. So what I ultimately came up with, um, kind of by accident, was this parallel channel. And, uh, and and it was really interesting because uh, you know it connects and then depending on how you on what you want to draw, you know there's some really good opportunity for um, market clarity here. Um, so I'm gonna put this right here for a second. Um, if you if you pay attention to to where this midline is touching, you know, so you've got the March low and then our low that we just touched. Um, we didn't quite get back down to it uh, back in September, October, um, but we were close. Uh, and then if you look at, you know, right here, resistance, right here, resistance, 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 resistance. Uh, so, you know, there's a whole bunch of things you could play with. Um, and I know some people aren't fans of log scale charts. Um, but I think it gives you good indicators because you can use this um, from previous cycles, this kind of same, the same sort of channel idea uh, as a way of maybe guesstimating price action and finding peaks and things like that. So suffice to say, uh, if I put the peak there, uh, actually, let's do this. Um, let's say I wanted to put the, the channel right there. Uh, what's really interesting, what's really cool about this, I mentioned um, Jordan from CTM. Uh, if you put the top of the channel um, at this, uh, I know this is kind of small, I apologize. If you put the top of the channel at around these peaks, then if if we were to end at, uh, you know, around mid to late September, um, originally Jordan's uh, price target was around 160,000. Um, or 140 to 160,000. This is kind of where he thought the, or from his original research from well over a year ago, where it would peak. And I just think it's interesting, and I know that he has revised his view, but I just think it's really interesting to point out that if we end around mid to late September, we are, this channel with the resistance at this level is basically going to end almost exactly where his price projection was. So kudos, you know. Um, I don't know if it's going to be there. I, I, I can't, I have no guarantees. There's no way you could really know. Um, I, right now, because of previous cycles, I've set, I've kind of set the, uh, the channel to there, the midline right around here, um, which mid to late September would put this around 360,000 um, or so. Um, suffice to say, the point is, is that I didn't realize how significant starting from the March low could actually be. Um, so it's just a thought, it's just one way to look and, and just maybe I'll take some time to do this here because I wanna show you that it does uh, it does work using the, the parallel channels. Um, so uh, bear with me here for a second. Um, if you put this, uh, if you make this parallel channel like this, um, look at where the uh, look at where the midline is, and look at where the peak is. All right, look at just look at the market sim symmetry. So that I mean, and that's just the first. That's or I'm sorry. That's just the 2016-2017 cycle. Um, that's why I say that this is perfectly reasonable to assume that it could be something like this. Um, I don't know. It's not a guarantee, as I said, um, but it's a possibility. Um, so I just thought I'd share that and also, you know, just reiterate my confidence um, and my conviction in my trade. Um, and just to remind everybody that if you are, uh, you know, if you don't, if you don't understand what you're investing in, if you don't have the conviction in the trade, um, then maybe it's not the trade for you. 
Um, but uh, for me, I still have plenty of conviction. I still believe that we're, uh, you know, days or weeks away from reaching, reattaining our all-time high and shooting into price discovery from there. Um, so just relax. Um, look at, I mean, it's just kind of interesting to look at since I've been looking at GBTC. Let's look at the daily chart to think of where we were like how low we were. One of the things I think is an indicator here too, by the way, just as a side note, since uh, since I'm pretty well known for my GBTC videos, um, this green box, it's really interesting given the discount on GBTC that this green box was not broken. We didn't break below the green box. I was really surprised at that because I actually moved my, my green box on Bitcoin, uh, my Bitcoin box, uh, was down right to, let's see, where were we? My green box was down here to about, uh, you know, 38,000. That was as low as it was going to go. But just this morning, I extended the box down to all the way down to the wick. I didn't have to do that on GBTC. And I think that that's kind of interesting because I said from the beginning, you know, I said when I first made this green box that if we go below this this would be 55% down from the top, which is the furthest that GBTC has ever dipped from its all-time high uh, in the previous 2016-2017 cycle. If we drop below this box, then I would be concerned and I would be looking to potentially get out because something would be completely broken. Well, we didn't get below that in spite of the fact that Bitcoin was down as far as it was and Bitcoin was down more than you know 50% from its high. So if we look here, what is what is this drawdown? Barely over 50%. Okay, and we're still not going to close down to that. So I think that that's something kind of important. So again, it's just another example of how I think the trajectory of GBTC and of Bitcoin overall is going to change over the next couple of days and weeks. So anyway, hopefully that's helpful. You're free to disagree with me if you want. Um, that's just my that's just my stance. Um, anyway, uh, again, do your research, uh, pick your levels, have conviction in whatever it is that you decide to do. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. See you guys next time.